There's no but. This is your only warning. If I catch you following us again, well, I won't be so friendly next time. Punk. Hi guys, my name is Jessa Muffin and welcome back to Across the Grooves. Previously, we were speaking with Ulysses X in order to try and track down Ulysses. So let's just jump right into it. What do you say? Let's see, Frank. It's kind of you, but I can't this evening. And I already know where I should look next. Something tells me I'll be buying a ticket to London very soon. But Trisha looks disappointed. Oh, fine. No problem. It's your decision. Drop me a line if you're back in Paris. I will. Thanks for all your help. I'm in a bar on the left bank. The place stretches into a long, vaulted cellar. The notes of a baby grand piano tinkle from a corner. The pianist plays a selection of old jazz standards, trying to play with Oscar Peterson, like finesse. Perhaps a little lacking in energy, but not unpleasant. Hey, I can't play, but I appreciate it when anyone else can play. I had time to stop at a hotel and take a shower before jumping on the subway. Frank's always punctual. He won't be long. And just then, as my gin and tonic arrives, I feel a hand on my shoulder. Hey, Al. We hug. It's always so good to see Frank. We've been friends since we were kids. We managed to stay in touch when he left on a carpentry apprenticeship, and I continued my studies. I feel a bit guilty for not catching up with him for so long. Frank is all smiles, but I can tell that something's bothering him. He's even more disheveled than usual, with shadows under his eyes. What? I'm about to ask how he's doing, but he beats me to it. Oh, he's nice and handsome. So, tell me, what brings you to the City of Lights? A high finance congress? Some dough to stash for the winemaking mafia? I smile. <laughs> no, nothing like that. Get this, I'm looking for my ex, Ulysses. You remember? The record guy? Didn't you break up, like, two or three years ago? I'm gonna give everyone the details. We'll see what happens. He sent me a record a few days ago. But yes, I haven't heard from him since we broke up. A record? You're going to think I'm old fashioned, but personally, I'd have gone for a big bunch of flowers if I wanted to hook up with an ex. That's always a safe bet. Then again, that was your last serious relationship, wasn't it? Maybe this is the moment to rekindle an old flame? I realize that Frank, too, has no memory of Jean-Baptiste. Even though they'd met several times in Paris and Bordeaux, we'd spent several weeks together with Frank and his girlfriend, Daphne, and they'd got on pretty well, he and Jean-Baptiste. Well, it's not exactly what you think. Let me explain. Lucy's just sent me this record, no explanation, no note, nothing. As if he had to get rid of it, and I was the only person he could trust with it, do you see? He frowns. Oh, right. That's odd, right? But you know, I've never hidden the fact that I thought Ulysses was great. In fact, I never got why you two broke up. You seem so good together. What's the record? I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. There's nothing on the jacket or the label. That's why I came to Paris. I'm trying to find Ulysses, and this record is my only lead. I guess I'm really worried about him. I understand. It all sounds a bit crazy. Let's change the subject. So that's it. I'm trying to trace the record and find out what could have happened to Ulysses. His partner suggested I check out Paris. He lived here after we broke up. Next step, London. At least you're seeing the world. That's the least you could say. 
And you? What's been happening with you since last year? How's Daphne? With a lift of his finger, Frank gestures me to wait, finishes the beer that he'd ordered when we arrived, and asks for a double scotch. This doesn't look good. Sorry. I needed something a little stronger to talk about it. The last time I saw you, you were a perfect couple, Daphne and you. What happened to... Frank cuts me off before I can finish my sentence. Daphne got pregnant last year. That's usually a good thing for most couples. He gulps his whiskey. She lost the baby. Give a sign of affection. I put my hand on his shoulder, his big, strong, muscly shoulders. Um, I'm sorry. It was complicated. A m few months later, Daphne and me, we decided to separate. I figured it would be temporary, that she needed some time. I never thought I'd lose her forever. Then she got an inheritance from her grandmother, a big house in the country, in the cruise. She went to live down there in August, kind of on a whim. She ditched her studies. That's a pity. That's a pity. If there was one person in the world I could see finishing a doctorate in sciences, it's Daphne. Yes, it surprised me too. On the other hand, I understand the need to reconstruct, to change. When something like that happens, there's a before and an after. It broke something in me too. Frank's eyes are damp. I don't think I've ever seen him so vulnerable. Oh, if we were to give him the record, he might be able to change it. But the butterfly effect usually is no bueno. I realized just how important she is to me. Just how much I couldn't live without her. And after... What happened after? I did something pretty stupid. I followed her. I moved to the village. I took on a few projects there. I was so afraid she'd forget me. I know she needed time to get herself together. That I should let her go at her own rhythm. Do you remember what you said when we got together? Frank, it was more than 10 years ago. That's a long time. You said it wouldn't last. And still, 10 years after that night at your apartment, we were still together. When I think that I was so beat, I almost didn't go. You know, it was me who pushed for the baby. Daphne wanted to wait till she finished her doctorate. It wouldn't have changed anything. If Daphne agreed to have the baby, it's because she wanted to have it. I think that she would agree, right? Frank, you know it's not Daphne's style to cave in under pressure. If she agreed to have a child with you, it's because she wanted to. Yeah, you're probably right. But that doesn't stop me from feeling guilty. So... You left to be with her? How are you getting on living together? I'm not sure. I feel like she's moving away from me a little more each day. Victor called me to help him on a site, a big job for Badiments uh, de France. That's why I'm back in Paris. And I needed a break to think things over. You know, He'd like us to work together. He's been on at me about it for a while now. He tried to talk me into it again yesterday. Oh, what do you think he'll do then? Is that a ring? Frank rummages in his pocket and pulls out a little velvet box, which he places on the bar. I don't need to be a psychic to know what's inside. I'm going back to crew tomorrow. You know how I feel about marriage. Everything I've gone through this year has made me think. I'm truly ready to commit to her. 
forever. <laughs> I've known for years that she's the only woman for me. The child, for me, that was the ultimate commitment. Frank pauses, gazing into space. And I'm going crazy. I need an anchor, do you see? Ah, oh, I don't know what to say! Oh my goodness! It's a good idea or it's a big mistake? Okay, let's think about this. I think maybe he's thinking a little bit too much about what he needs and maybe, you know, I don't really know what she needs. Do you think she needs more commitment or you think she's just trying to run away from the relationship? Uh, this is a tough one. I think it's a big mistake. Sorry to be blunt, but I think it's a big mistake. Oh no, what did I do? Alice, I've been turning this problem over in my head for weeks. I don't know what to do. If I do nothing, I'm scared I'll lose Daphne forever. If I decide to do something, I risk losing her. The problem is that ring looks a lot like an ultimatum. If you care about her, please take it easy, go slow. I know you, you'll dive straight in, and if it doesn't go the way you want, you'll get angry, you'll say things that you'll regret. Frank looks away sheepishly. I know you've already decided, and that nothing I say will make you change your plans. So if you really plan to ask her to marry you, despite everything warning you to watch your step, then go softly, otherwise you're going to screw it up, and then it will be all over for good. Frank nods, murmurs thanks, and throws back the rest of his drink. Anyway, enough about all that. Another round? He points at my glass and adds, Same again? Gin and tonic, right? The waiter brings us fresh glasses and we talk about everything and nothing. The evening goes by without my noticing. We order a last drink. It's after midnight when Frank suggests we say goodnight. It's late and he's got a long road tomorrow. We pay the bill and we're swallowed up by the Parisian night. Oh, looks so nice. It's only a few minutes walk between the bar and my hotel. Frank has assisted in on accompanying me. We're recalling old incidents from high school when I start to feel that I'm being watched again. Yeah, that guy, right there. You see him? <laughs> that guy. Frank notices and asks me what's wrong. In a low voice, I tell him that I feel like we're being followed. Frank, with his usual attack, turns around sharply. You know, I think there's a guy hiding behind that car. Wait. Frank marches up to the car in question. Oh no. Frank, don't die! Aware that he's been caught, the guy stands up, a nervous smile playing on his lips. It's the old rockabilly who was listening in on my conversation with Mark two or days earlier. Good evening, Eddie Black. Nice to meet you. Frank turns to me. Do you know this clown? No, but he followed me from Bordeaux. I just wanted to... Frank cuts him off straight away. I don't care what you want. You stop following my friend. But... There's no but. This is your only warning. If I catch you following us again, well, I won't be so friendly next time. Punk. Alright, alright. I don't want any trouble, okay? I don't know what kind of voice to give him. Eddie Black turns round and goes back up the road. I couldn't tell if he was disappointed or annoyed. Do you know what he wants? I think he's looking for the record Ulysses sent me. But how would he know you have it? I think he knows Ulysses. It's the only explanation. Yes, it is. But if he can trace it to you, maybe he's not the only one. That worries me too. Yes, I have to admit, that's worrying me too. I don't think I told you, but my apartment in Bordeaux was turned over. You were burgled? 
No, no, there wasn't anything missing. I think the person who broke in was looking for something specific, if you see what I mean. The infamous record. I reckon. Do you th think that's the guy who broke in? I don't know. It's possible. Another good reason for you to be careful. Then again, I don't really have much choice. The only thing I can do is try to find Ulysses as quickly as possible and hope that everything turns out okay. Maybe the old Rockabilly was actually trying to be friends with us and... Maybe not be friends with us. I mean, he's been following us, but maybe he's actually just trying to warn us about the record. Frank nods, but his face is full of concern. Right, come on. I think we've had enough excitement for today. We set off again toward my hotel. Man, the artwork is so nice in this game. Just like the harsh lines and shadows, it's very well illustrated for the style that it's going for. One o'clock. I'm on a train heading to London. Arriving at St. Pancras in just over two hours which gives me the time to find a hotel and prepare my search. As there's probably no better way of finding a record store owner than talking to other record store owners, I'll begin by making a list of stores to visit. I'll take the opportunity to ask a few questions about the record too. After my exciting night, I've spent a hectic morning running from subway to subway to catch the first train and all on an empty stomach. All that drinking, I'm probably super hungover. <laughs> If I'm going to be roaming London with my suitcase, I really should eat something first. I grudgingly decide to take a wander down to the buffet car to buy myself a sandwich, which is unlikely to be tasty, but it will probably be very expensive. Instinctively, I check the record is tucked well at the bottom of my bag and begin to trek to car 13. I'm ordering a ham sandwich and a cup of insipid brown liquid, which claims to be coffee. Bleh. <laughs> when I notice a poster suggesting that it might be a good idea to invest in a travel card. It's interesting. I check my wallet to see if by any chance I have forgotten Oyster card with few credits on my last conference. As I feared, it must be on a shelf somewhere in my apartment in Bordeaux. It's all right. You can buy coffee and a sandwich, you'll be fine. Unless, of course it isn't, it simply doesn't exist at all in this reality. Well, it might not. That's so depressing, my cute boyfriend! We were planning our future together! The steward behind the counter tells me that he's sorry, but there are a lot of prepaid cards. I've just resigned myself to a long wait in line on my arrival in the bustle of King's Cross Station when the person behind me offers her card. I turn, surprised. She's in her 30s with short hair and a trouser suit. Kinda weird. I'm going to refuse. <laughs> That's very kind, but I can't accept. Please, I insist. I don't take to the tube much, honestly. It's been lying around in my bag for ages. <laughs> okay, I guess she was speaking French, and I did a bad job with her accent. Her French is excellent, despite the touch of a foreign accent which I can't place. If you're really resolved on an exchange of resources, buy me a coffee and we'll call it even. I'm almost out of cash and it'll avoid me paying the card charges for such a small amount. And anyway, I wouldn't mind a bit of company. It'll help pass the time, don't you, Zink? She holds out a hand. Eva, nice to meet you. Alice. I shake her hand, nod, and order another espresso for her. Yes, an espresso. I like those. I join my generous benefactor who's taking a place near the counter. I slide the coffee to her, and she slides the travel card to me. So, tell me, Alice, what brings you to London? I take a minute to watch her before answering. This Eva is a bit odd. 
I'm certainly not going to share my private business with a stranger, no matter how generous she is. Plus, there's nothing to convince me that she's not the umpteen person who wants to steal Ulysses' record. I don't really like lying, so... Oh god! The skull lit up! Oh no. I'm looking for someone close who I've lost contact with. Apparently he might have gone to London. Oh, that's exciting. Someone close? Maybe an ex-fiance? That's odd. How does she know... Not exactly. We were never engaged, but we did live together. Yes. That's a romantic story. I like it. I wonder why you wanted to make contact again. Let me guess. Hmm. I'd say you'd lived through something that's changed your view of the world and you're looking for answers, isn't it? I involuntarily stiffen. This is weird. So in fact, she knows exactly who I am, and her presence in the line was no coincidence. She scrutinizes me, her eyes too intense, too piercing, making me extremely uneasy. I got goosebumps, lady! What's up with you? I, I don't like it. As if she could plumb the depths of my soul with a glance. I try to regain control of the conversation by turning the question back on her. And you, what brings you to London? Well, I guess you could say I lost something a few years ago, an object that was priceless to me and my organization. Oh god, she's been tracking me down! No! I, I thought being evasive, we weren't going to actually tell her the truth. After finally tracking it down very recently, I found that it had changed hands before I could say, let's say, secure a transaction. If you see what I mean. Despite any doubts about my companion's intentions before, they are now crystal clear. I could try to feign ignorance and slip away. I don't believe Ava's the type to make a scene in public. I could also finish this game of make-believe and confront her head-on about the record. Alright, I don't know if she can be trusted, and she's got an organization. No, sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you don't mind, I'm going to go back to my seat. Thank you for your oyster card, it's very kind of you. I turn away. Oh, she's grabbing hold of me! Eva catches hold of my arm. Alice, let me give you some advice, if I may. You can still forget all about this and go back to your little life in Bordeaux. The records won't give you what you're looking for. Think about it. The records stole the love of my life from me. Let go of my arm, please. I need to know now. Oh, I guess we are being hasty? I don't know what these symbols are at the top. I'm afraid that's impossible. Now that I know about the record, how am I supposed to go back to my regular life as if nothing had happened? Shit. You wouldn't say that if you knew what you were getting into. There's still time for you. She lets go of my arm. Something tells me we'll be meeting again. And next time, I hope with all my heart that you'll be ready to return that which belongs to me. She turns to the window and watches the English countryside rush past, cutting off the conversation. I wait undecided for a moment before taking my sandwich and my coffee and leaving the buffet car. Dude, I made so many mistakes. The first thing I notice when I get back to my seat is that my case is gone. I understand better why Ava had redoubled her efforts to keep me talking. I conclude that she must have one or several accomplices, unlike Eddie Black, who seems to be operating alone. I don't expect I'll see my case again, which, in any case, contain nothing of any values, just some toiletries and a few clothes I'd brought with me. <sighs> the record is safe in my handbag with my papers. My neighbor, in the next seat, looks like she's fast asleep. 
and I don't have the heart to wake her to ask if she'd notice anything. As a salve to my conscience, I question the two teenagers in the seat across the aisle, but they shrug their shoulders and murmur, Sorry. I drop into my seat, struggling against panic. The thought of finding the conductor and telling him about my problem crosses my mind, but I banish it quickly. And what if that's what they expect me to do? I admit to myself with some difficulty that the conversation with Eva has really shaken me up. Uh, Eva will certainly be on the lookout for her first chance to get hold of the record. I'll have to be doubly careful now. The last half hour of my journey drags past in feverish suspense. When the train finally begins to pull into the station, I leave my seat to be near the exit, ready to disappear into the crowd as soon as it stops and the door opens. Alright guys, so that was like a bit of a roller coaster. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this video, push that like button. Subscribe if you want to see any more games that I play. And then hit that notification bell because I play lots of games and then you'll be able to see them. Alright, well, I love you guys. Have a great day, have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!